Hello and welcome to the Digital Insight, the technology and supply chain podcast that delivers valuable C-level perspective into the core issues surrounding business transformation and digital disruption. Each episode will bring you the most inspiring executive insights from those leading transformation strategies within the world's biggest and best known companies. The Digital Insight, disrupt, transform, evolve. Hello and welcome to Digital Insight, the podcast from CPO Strategy and The Interface Magazine. I'm Jason Walsh. This week we have something special for listeners. Appropriately enough, given the subject matter of supply chains and the logistics they entail, we intend to bring you on a journey. Joining us over the coming weeks will be Frank Vorath of Gartner. Based in Hamburg, Frank is Executive Business and Supply Chain Transformation Leader at the renowned firm of analysts, and he will be discussing with us many aspects of supply chains. But starting this week, Frank sketches out what digital transformation actually means in supply chain management. So Frank, uh, can you tell me what it is that is driving new business models in the whole supply chain area? Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, we um, at Gardner uh, are a strategic advisory and research service and providing uh, actionable insight and advice to to our clients across uh, many industries um, and really focusing on delivering value to them by uh, providing um, advice partnering with them also using the entire network we have on um, analysts and and gardener resources to create that value yeah and I mean, what kinds of industries are we speaking of here? Are these industries that have always been inclined to work with the newest technology, or does it work right across the board with more industries that we would think about in more traditional terms? It's really across various industries, really from, you know, I would say multi-industrial side, heavy manufacturing, high-tech uh, technologies, um, communication, infrastructure, um pharmaceuticals, retail company, fashion companies. So really everything what you, you, you really uh, would think about industries, we, we actually focusing on and, and really uh, trying to put uh, the emphasis on accelerating what companies trying to accomplish. We also uh, know that uh, probably 63% of all companies confirmed by their CEOs going through some kind of um, changes related to their business models over the next um, one to two years. And that, that really gives us a, a playing field to add value to the environment. Based on our experience, expertise, we have in the company and, and focusing on, on them and uh, being really impactful. Well, when you say the business models are expected to change within the next year or so, and what's driving that change? Is this uh, in terms of digital transformation or is it something something else? Well, it has a lot to do that. That uh, digitalization obviously is on the forefront of a lot of these kind of things, but also mega trends if you think about you know urbanization, um, if you think about mobility concepts, uh, if you think about you know connectivity um, of you know. And when we talk about connectivity, about um, the physical world uh, with actually um, the di- digital world. So if you think about um, new business models where uh, people traditionally um, sold products and delivered them through their um, uh, entire end-to-end supply chain, uh, now here uh, we would we would we would probably see that. Um, now businesses are focusing on probably selling solutions um, or more outcomes like for example when you confirm um, certain uh, outcomes to to your clients it becomes a, a, a different business model so it's not just the product anymore it's the outcome you you actually uh, commit to deliver as a value generator for for your customers and that obviously triggers off a, a business model change uh, it probably triggers off um, a different kind of uh, capabilities i want to talk about capabilities what i really mean is about the the, the people element uh, the processes the technology you deploy and also in a way how you measure that and and how you bring that into your own 
environment uh, to be able to deliver on the promise you make through your value proposition as, as a business. Yeah. So we, we observe a lot of, of changes, which then again uh, are triggering of um, different changes. A lot of companies are going through a, a, a complete redesign or review of their organizational design and structure they need to have. Um, also looking into their ability to perform, still perform their day-to-day -day business operations while they transform and what it means in terms of their structure and the skills they need to, to have in, in their business. But also, when you think about that, uh, what kind of uh, skills they need, because a lot of uh, the, the traditional roles we would, we would see in a supply chain, uh, they will change over the next couple of years. If you just think about one element of, of supply chain planning and the um, combination of uh, new technologies which are coming in and um, artificial intelligence, for example, and the combination of what it means between human um, and the machine and the opportunity to automate certain processes and now you think about the change of the role of that person in future and the skills uh, that person needs to have. So a lot of companies going going through that. A lot of companies are, are redesigning their, uh, their, their processes end to end. They're trying to automate processes. They are looking to reduce cycle times, lead times, um, focusing on becoming more productive, more efficient probably also reducing cost, but also being more focused on, on the customer to deliver value in a more like hustle-free um, in, environment. But then also a lot of companies are, are focusing on, on trying out these, these new type of emerging technologies. When you think about um, artificial intelligence I've just spoken about, uh, blockchain I've spoken not yet about, but a lot of uh, companies trying that uh, or also like uh, process automation um, robots, a lot of companies really focusing on what does it mean to, to have new capabilities, what does it mean to use uh, technologies as an enabler for us to create uh, that new business model or business models we're going to have in future um, beyond the just traditional models they had in the past. Yeah, and I mean, I think um, it's possible, I suppose, to see this as an extension of the just-in-time revolution, but it seems to be much more granular and, and to, 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 to go to a much deeper level. When you speak about things like blockchain, uh, is that used you know, in, in the same way that, as it is in other applications? It's used as a ledger in order to ensure that the transaction is guaranteed and runs smoothly? Is, 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 is that its function in the supply chain? Well, first of all, uh, I do believe, and, and we know that there, there are very little um, proof of concepts uh, out there uh, to apply uh, blockchain technologies across the end-to-end -end supply chain. A lot of companies are actually trying uh, to put pilots in, into place to, to actually being able to see if there are benefits generated over time. I mean, we have a prediction when you think about the Ghana harp cycle um, that it will take at least uh, 10 years before you really would see uh, blockchain technologies coming into, into mainstream. So now if you think about blockchain technology, uh, you need to think about transactions uh, which are recorded in a, in a more secure way and where you have different trading partners in the end-to-end -end supply chains which actually uh, being able to, um, to exchange data in, in real time in a, in a more secured way. So now you could use that in different ways. Um, it, it probably could make your end-to-end -end supply chain also uh, more more efficient, but uh, you, you still have to really look into uh, the benefits you expect the technology would generate for you versus the investments you have to. Yeah, and I think there have been some concerns around blockchain in terms of its energy consumption and power consumption and, and uh, the, the computing cycles that it uses. But I guess that sort of thing is is, is, is what we're working out now and, and we'll see if perhaps it'll be replaced by a similar, more efficient technology.
So in terms of Gartner's own analysis and research and working with its clients, um, do you see this as coming being a top-down process, a bottom-up one or a 360-degree one? And I'll explain what I mean by that. Is this driven by the board pushing down for greater efficiency within the company? Or is it driven by customers demanding more in today's world? Or is it both things happening at the same time and perhaps some other factors? Oh, I would say it's pretty much driven uh, by um, the, 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 the economy, the, the needs of customers to uh, generate value. So everything what we, we do is focusing on the customer and, and delivering value for, for them. Um, the research is driven around um, also uh, future trends um, um, around the capabilities you need as a business to be able to create sustainable business performance and results. Uh, the technology outlook is, is driven in, uh, about that. And, and we look um, into mega trends. We, we look into um, combining the research and advice we're giving not only uh, on the current environment and at current state, we, we're pretty much looking also into into the future future outlook on on things and and really having sometimes a view on on uh, ten years beyond and and having an opportunity to give that advice uh, to um, our customers in a way that they can take it back to their environment to be able to make better decisions um, for for their businesses for for their customers so we we really focusing on them and everything what we what we do is is really looking at them to create the value for them. And are you finding that this is is, is, is further along in business to business or organizations or in business to consumer? Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't make the, the, the differences here between um, B2B or B2C. I think uh, we, we're looking end to end. Uh, now you, you have different business models of companies where they are focusing on B2B, but every company, if you if you think about that, uh, really truly is, is part of of, a, of a ecosystem. And in, in future, um, you know, you, you would see a business models as a combination between B2B or B2C. And um, companies uh, won't be able to just being competitive on their own they're all part of of a, of a ecosystem mm -hmm. and uh, have to find uh, ways uh, to partner in a very collaborative way to to generate that type of value so i wouldn't make a difference between you know b2b or b2c in the end of the day if you really look at that as an ecosystem yeah, I mean the reason I bring it up is because uh, looking statistically, B two B transactions, online um, purchasing uh, has lagged behind B two C, which I think is reasonable uh, when you understand it in the context that it might be easy to order uh, office supplies or stationery or furniture, but it's perhaps a little bit more complex uh, a transaction when you're uh, requiring a one off specialized machine tool or machine part. Uh, something that's a little bit more difficult to purchase. The costs are higher and uh, the tolerances can be. Can be, can, can be very fine and so on. So uh, the, 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 the methodologies tend to be a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you think about it, um, what uh, we will also see in future is that, that we have to handle a different level of complexity while we trying and need to be flexible at the same time. And that uh, agility and complexity um, is, is actually some of the key focus areas of, of companies which are out there because in the end of the day you also want to uh, stay uh, agile or flexible uh, in in case of changes uh, you have to make in your environment um, often companies in, in the last couple of years they, they went through um, an enormous amount of change related to uh, business growth um, activities uh, merger acquisitions uh, spin-offs uh, you, you have seen it all now that that means you have to be somewhere flexible uh, in your in your in environment in your setup as an organization while you also have to handle new complexity which are coming in with the new business model so in a way it's 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 that in such is, is a complexity to handle for for companies going forward 
And just to finish up, uh, a few minutes ago you mentioned AI and ML. I mean, the function of AI and ML, is it purely in terms of automation and simplifying the process for staff, or is there a kind of more uh, complex uh, and, and, and prediction for the future that AI will start to move into the supply chain uh, in, in, in a more um, decision-making capacity? Absolutely. I mean, we, we see that already that a um, couple of companies are really um, automating their decision making process um, where where you have now, um, you know, certain uh, things around the integrated business planning or sales and operation planning processes being automated, driven by artificial intelligence and algorithm. Uh, where uh, now uh, the machine is giving certain scenarios to uh, the planner or the, the person who does the planning and, and gives the person a, a better chance to make um, a better decision in the end of the day. So is, is, I would say is that combination between the human being and the machine which which is really uh, driving driving the ability to make better decisions going forward is not the one or the other it's a combination of both yeah uh, which, which yeah. We'll, we'll see now most companies when when it comes to that have to to go in maturity in terms of getting their data organized most companies are struggling with data and uh, really getting through uh, a clean state of their data to be able to do that, right? Now, um, but if you're being able to sort out your data, then the combination between you know the human being and the skill that human being needs to have, plus the technology you can deploy is something which is actually taking the whole process of uh, being able to make better decisions to the next level. Well, I mean, is, is the data question something that needs to be approached as a clean slate? Because if you look at the typical business, you're going to have some structured data, maybe CRM or ERP. You're going to have an awful lot of unstructured data lying around on PDFs and, and, and word processor documents and so on. And then you'll have some semi-structured data, maybe dating back five, ten years in Excel spreadsheets and all kinds of things like that. And to, to really uh, get to grips with, with the data that a company is, is, is generating and that there might be potential value locked in, do they need to declare a sort of year zero approach and say, from today we are not accepting any more unstructured data or is there a way of you know diving back into it well i do believe every 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 company needs to first have an understanding what the data means uh, to to them and and how they use the data and you've spoken about structured and unstructured data and and there is also an element of looking into the new business models if you think about uh, if you have a I would say an e-commerce business model, digitalized business model, you receive data from, from different sources. Now you have to bring that into your planning environment. And that's uh, not the traditional way how you have done that in, in the past. Now you have to maybe do and say it's an operation planning for your e-commerce business and bring that in uh, into your overall sales and operation planning and use, use the data uh, to do that. Um, now that's what we are talking uh, about here and how to make use out, out, of, out of the data. But to be able to do that, you have to take the, the, the first step and um, you know clean your data, uh, have an understanding about what the data mean and could mean for you in, in future in terms of value uh, creation. Now, um, a lot of companies, um, I would say, starting there, haven't really matured enough and probably need to focus on uh, also putting uh, a, a more defined structure in, into place, and especially around data, um, getting handle of that data uh, as an end-to-end -end, uh, environment, data end-to-end, -end, uh, making sure that you have then people who are being able to clean these data to get them in, in a certain form so that you being able now to analyze the data uh, where you have some data scientists to be able now to use the data. So it's a whole maturity work, as I would call that, which needs to happen before. And well, that, that requires, requires investments and, and companies probably will come to a place uh, where they uh, will realize that these investment needs to happen. 
Well, I mean, just on that point, I mean, I think supply chain issues are, are obviously very well understood by supply chain professionals. There's probably typically a fairly good understanding at board level. I'm not sure that that understanding typically permeates throughout the company, for example, IT, uh, other departments like that. Um, is, is there a case here for uh, trying to make supply chain uh, a stronger presence in the, in the business going forward? Well, I do believe if you think about that, uh, you you could you could also ask yourself a question: Is supply chain part of your business or is end-to-end supply chain your business? Now, you also when you look in, in into the roles of IT, they will be also n- newly defined. If you think about that, uh, companies already have uh, chief digitalization officers, uh, you know, chief data officers. Uh, all these these type of new roles are, are popping up. So now even the information technology as such uh, will probably uh, have a different um, you know meaning for companies going forward. If you think about hardware and software, uh, maybe IT technologies and departments will be structured more about service providers for for hardware and maybe the software and the data and everything. Uh, will be transferred probably into an integrated into in supply chain management. If you think about what you all can do uh, with with the data, that may trigger off a, a discussion uh, around uh, a new organizational structure. Okay, thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to the Digital Insight Podcast in association with theinterface.net and cpostrategy.com. The Digital Insight is brought to you by B2E Media Limited. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review. And don't forget to check out our podcast archive at www.b2e-media.com slash podcast.